Fridays on ABC. I can't hold it. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. The Six Million Dollar Man, an incredible merging of man and machine. Well, how fast can you run? A bit 60. This man has two bionic legs, one bionic arm, and a bionic eye. All atomic power. How much did you cost? Six million. Lee Majors is the Six Million Dollar Man. At a special time Friday at 9 o'clock. Barney, I don't like it. There's something that's just not right at that mine. The whole mountain come down on top of it. <laughs> Don't have to take his arm. The gold mine, Doc Elliott. Tomorrow night at 10. When you meet another man who lives the gusto life, you want to let him know you understand. After all, you only go around once and gusto's what it's all about. Come around, take the gusto life's giving. Come around, taste the gusto of She was hit on the head, you know, and then suffocated. Think you can lift any latent prints? I mean, I feel like I'd like to do something. I'd like to break out of the mold. Just Bust loose. Pick the night and I'll cook it. Yeah, but I already got a girl. I'm a great cook. George Washington's mother was the kind of hostess who could welcome men like General Lafayette with homemade gingerbread. Today, Sears is painting her Virginia home with easy living paint. Sears' best flat finish latex for walls and woodwork for every room. It's the tough paint that later washes clean like enamel. Mary Washington's recipe lives on, and we wish the same for her home. Sears' easy living paint for great American homes like yours. For over a century, the McCormicks have been breaking in their own horses, slowly, carefully. And for as long as the McCormicks have been breaking horses, Pabst has been making beer, slowly, carefully. It's the only way to bring out the unique character of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst, the low-time flavor, the way beer was meant to be. I want to spend one afternoon watching her with nothing to stick her nose into. And how long will that last? 12 20, Roger. 12 7, 12 7, 7, come in. Promise to control yourself, Henry. This time when you see the new improved gravy train, don't go crazy, okay? Since we switched to new improved gravy train, Henry can't wait to get at it. Henry, you promised. It must be that new beefy tasting gravy. It's rich and thick and so much darker than before. It must be better tasting. Henry says it is. New gravy train with better tasting gravy. There's a crazy new thing from Volkswagen that comes with the top up, with the top down, with the doors off, with the windshield down. A car that feels at home wherever you feel at home. A car you can dress up after you get it to look any way you want it. A car that can be anything can only be called The Thing by Volkswagen. New Year's Eve. The SS Poseidon is hit by a 90-foot tidal wave and capsized. The Poseidon Adventure. Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, Carol Lindley, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters. Who will survive? The Poseidon Adventure. Rated PG. 
Now playing at theaters and drive-ins everywhere, check newspaper for theater near you. Westward, the women at 11.30. Good evening. President Nixon tonight never let on that he was on a collision course with the Congress. Mr. Nixon appeared before a friendly audience, the veterans of foreign wars in Washington. He spoke of world peace, young people, but he never mentioned Watergate or the impeachment inquiry. The appearance said to be part of the White House campaign to improve the president's image. This as a new legal confrontation with the Congress appears imminent tonight. White House News Secretary Ronald Ziegler today said the House Judiciary Committee is not going to get another 42 Watergate tape recordings unless the committee inquiring into the possibility of impeaching the president defines what is an impeachable offense and what specific allegations within that definition the committee is investigating. Earlier, Vice President Ford warned of the potential danger to the president of actions that would lead to the rejection of a subpoena from the Judiciary Committee. That, Ford said, could be a catalyst hastening President Nixon's impeachment. We have reactions from committee chairman, one of its members, and the president's attorney. We tried to be as specific as we possibly can. And for anyone to say that uh, we are looking for material uh, to pour through and to go through a fishing expedition, I think is without foundation in fact. I think what the White House has really done is thrown the gauntlet down and said they're not cooperating anymore. They will not disclose anything more voluntarily and that if we want any more information, we're going to have to take them kicking and screaming into the courts to get it. They are already saying that they don't quite uh, feel that they are getting the cooperation they need out of the White House. They don't feel that you have a right to set uh, the limit on the inquiry to only the Watergate matter. They want to go in the I into the ITT. Uh, and we're furnishing them uh, all the ITT matter. But you're not furnishing them all that they have asked for. As and far as ITT is concerned, I believe so. And the milk fund? I believe so. If we reach a point at which the committee is asking for specific tapes and the president says no and he is subpoenaed and held in contempt by Congress by the House of Representatives for refusing would that be an impeachable offense? I said it would all depend on what the nature of the request was in my view and I can't foresee that and therefore it's a very difficult question to answer. Former Attorney General Elliot Richardson who resigned from Mr. Nixon's cabinet said the president's much too defensive position on Watergate has increased the chances for impeachment. San Francisco supervisors gave striking city workers there until midnight to stop picketing city sewage plants or else negotiations will not resume. The six-day-old strike has paralyzed transportation and most of the city's services, especially the sewage treatment plants, which have been pouring raw sewage into the bay. Management personnel today finally started some of the plants up again. Rita Trevino of Station KPIX has a report. Trevino has the story. The first sewage treatment plant was put back into operation this morning, handling about 20 million gallons of raw sewage. An overflow signaled the opening of the North Point plant this afternoon. Officials here said someone forgot a valve when the plant was closed, so 5,000 gallons of water and waste poured into the street. Both plants combined restored about 80% of the city's treatment facilities, but 20 million gallons are still being dumped straight into the bay. City officials here hope to open the third plant tomorrow. It takes about 100 people to operate the three plants. The two reopened with a crew of four, and the public works director says his problems are far from over. It's, it's a question of, uh, of, uh, of, of the manpower, and that's manpower. That isn't just arms and legs, that's people who know what they're doing because this is a very complicated process and these plants are tied into uh, together and uh, they have to be coordinated and it's just uh, a question of know-how and availability of manpower to do this job. We're hopeful we can do it and we're working toward that end. Of course, the question of restoring adequate resources remains unanswered. While the three sewage plants may be fully operating by tomorrow, city officials still have to try to do something to clean up after the four-day dump. And they say they're doing all they can now to just put an end to the 100 million gallon a day dump into the bay. That report from Rita Trevino of KPIX. This morning, one judge ordered the strikers to go back to work. They refused, and Mayor Alioto refused to have the police arrest the strikers. So later today, another judge told the police to remove striking workers from the picket lines. So far, we don't know if the police have moved on that. Today in Los Angeles, some gasoline stations posted signs that were supposed to tell you the hours of operation and any limits on gasoline sales. This was the first day of the new law, but there was a hitch. Not all of the signs meant the same thing. One meant that it was open 8 to 6 for service. Who knows when for gas. One that proclaimed it was open from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and it was selling gas then. 
unless the daily allocation was sold out. One read 8 to 11. The dealer said that meant for gas, but added he expects to run out of gas by Saturday. Well, then, then I have what? a sign, which is this one. It says that I'm out of gas for that day, and, and my delivery is on Sunday, so I wait till Monday. But the sign will still say 8 to 11 on your side. That's correct. Perinian says it's simply too much trouble to keep changing the signs. The Arab Oil Conference, which was originally scheduled for Cairo, Egypt, is going to open tomorrow in Libya. The ten nations involved apparently are still split on whether to lift the oil embargo against the United States. The Japanese soldier who held out for nearly 30 years went home today. We'll have film. Kathy Mann hears some old radio voices, and we'll have more news right after these messages. Have you seen the other side? Where you live. Da, 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 Come along on United Airlines da, da, to the greatest land of all, your land. Mother country's got her arms open wide. Don't let your good land pass you by. Your land is our land anywhere the big bird flies. Stretching out. takes you to more of this proud land than United. From the historic east to the islands of Hawaii. Come along, the other side is waiting. Security Pacific Bank was the first to introduce this combined check and charge card. Today, it's better than ever. Our latest improvement is unlimited check writing for only $2 a month. And our service includes free personalized checks, no minimum balance, master charge, ready reserve account, ready reference statement, check guarantee, and free traveler's checks. The combined account. To make sure you have it, inquire at any branch of Security Pacific Bank. For many soldiers, the homecoming often can be the most trying time of their service. One can only imagine the emotions inside the mind of a man who hadn't seen his home for more than 30 years. About 7,000 people crowded the spectators' galleries at Tokyo Airport to greet the man for whom World War II ended just two days ago. The plane carrying Lieutenant Hiro Onoda taxied to the VIP ramp, and the crowds cheered as he emerged from the plane. Onoda seemed more relaxed and confident than he had been when he first emerged from the jungles. So many officials wanted to greet him that it was several minutes before he reached his parents, now both in their 80s. His eyes were misty, but he maintained the traditional Japanese reticence to show emotion publicly. His mother, a descendant of a samurai family, had sent him off to war with strict admonitions to obey his officers and his emperor. Thirty years later, she welcomed him home, saying, you did well. Bruce Dunning, CBS News, Tokyo. For the first time, there is a hint of disagreement within the up till now solid ranks of the Hearst family. The hint came from Patricia Hearst's fiance, Stephen Weed. I wanted to say to her that we certainly haven't forgotten about her and that I can see that why she might be somewhat irritated about Certainly from her point of view, it, it may appear that we have not done all that it seems like we could do. I don't blame her for being irritated. I, I, I really don't. But I think she should, and everybody should realize that we've been under a lot of tension. We would said that there had been conflicting opinions on how to deal with the kidnapping from the very beginning. Too many opinions, he said, adding that he wished he had a larger voice on what's been going on. We would promised that he'd have more to say on the matter in the future. In another development, attorneys for Symbionese Liberation Army members Joseph Ramiro and Russell Little, who are in prison, say they're going to ask a judge tomorrow to permit a nationwide television appearance for their clients, an appearance that was demanded by the kidnappers of Patricia Hearst. Now, Kathy Mann can tell us about some of the people in the night's news and some of the voices, too. Kathy. <laughs> 
Right, Joe, but first to Britain. The people there were expecting the usual pageantry when Parliament opened today, but Queen Elizabeth ordered no pomp and circumstance at this year's ceremony. There was no golden coach to bring her to Parliament, no trumpeters to greet her, no plumed soldiers, and no ermine robes for the members of Parliament. Obviously, the economic crisis has reached the top in Britain. Senator Sam Irvin, who heads up the Watergate Committee, is going to be honored by the University of Missouri in April. The journalism department is giving the senator a special award for his devotion to the freedom of ideas and his high regard for the First Amendment. Well, Martha Mitchell is back in the news tonight. In a television interview, Mrs. Mitchell put the blame on the White House for all her family troubles. She says that she doesn't blame John at all for the breakup of their marriage. The golden age of radio made a brief comeback today at the Los Angeles Press Club, and it featured some of the best-known voices of the 30s and 40s. What evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens hey luigi my friend hello luigi hello 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 and it called rosa rosa hey, hey, hey. that's my little rosa Henry! Henry Aldrich! I'm coming, Kathy, and since I always kiss my mother goodnight before I go to bed, here. <laughs> well, Joe, I think I caught the flavor of the golden age of radio, even though it came a bit before my time. Did you expect that kiss? <laughs> I did not expect that kiss. At the press club, I've seen other people put a glass up to their lips and not get as much sound out of it as, <laughs> as he did with the as shadow. As he did, right. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Streaking came to Hollywood and Vine and our cameras and about 3,000 people caught the dash. We'll have that in Tom Kelly with the night sports news right after this. This is Gino's new service slice tray. In it, Gino's new frozen pizza, pizzeria style pizza. The special tray holds nine separate slices. The pizza is special, more cheese and sauce, more of everything that makes pizzeria pizza good about a dollar less than you'd pay in a pizzeria. Gino's makes it easy to enjoy pizzeria-style pizza from your own freezer. A new concept in pizza from Gino's. 15.8 miles per gallon at a steady 55 miles per hour. That's what 10 Cadillac Sedan DeVille's averaged in proving ground tests under actual driving conditions. Cars were selected at random, had popular options in radial tires, the air conditioning was turned off. Of course, the mileage you get depends on how and where you drive. But these tests show you don't have to sacrifice comfort, quality, or security for efficiency. Cadillac, the quality car that makes sense for today. I wouldn't think of using anything but Lysol spray disinfectant in my home to get rid of germs and odors. Lysol goes right to these problems. Kills germs on things all over. Kills germs that cause odors on surfaces. In the air, Lysol eliminates odors not caused by germs. No matter where these germ and odor problems are, Lysol gets rid of them fast. I rely on Lysol spray to take good care of my home. Always have, always will. Betty and Sue are very much alike, except when it comes to taking care of their floors. Betty still gets down on her hands and knees, scrubbing and waxing. It's hard work. But Sue takes care of her floors the easy way. Instead of a liquid cleaner and water, I use Mop and Glow. It cleans and shines. I just squeeze it out, go over it with a damp mop, and the floor is beautiful. Mop and Glow. It cleans and shines every time you damp mop. Why would anyone use anything else? No matter what any of us think about streaking, when the streaker is a grandmother doing her dash at the intersection of Hollywood and Vine, you know there's reason to send Bill Applegate out to see if he can see anything. Stripper Liz Rene has been appearing naked, or nearly naked, in public for a long time. And even though her streak down Hollywood Boulevard today was obviously a publicity stunt for her new burlesque act, she told me beforehand that she really appreciates what streaking is all about. 
I think this streaking came along just at the right time. The news was so serious and depressing and all the Watergate, uh, the Watergate mess and all kinds of other things. And everyone needed to just let their hair down and uh, lose their inhibitions and have fun and let have it, a few laughs. Let it all hang out. Yeah, and I really think this it was the answer to it. I couldn't turn down an invitation to accompany Miss Renee to her streaking location, Hollywood and Vine. A large crowd, two, maybe 3,000, had already gathered and were eagerly awaiting Miss Renee's arrival. At high noon, we pulled up short of the intersection. Miss Renee flashed me a smile, dropped her robe, and with nothing to conceal her 42, 25, 35 figure, gave the crowd what it came for. Afterwards, Miss Renee told me her streaking experience had been fantastic. The police apparently don't agree. They say they will charge her with indecent exposure. That shouldn't interfere, though, with her debut tomorrow night at the Ivar Theater, where she will be doing basically what she did today, only it won't be for free. Bill Applegate reporting. Indecent exposure, of course, cannot be charged against our film editors, can it? <laughs> mm -mm. What, what makes the police think that 42-21-35 is indecent? I, I, oh, there you go. It was a dynamite night for the Lakers as the uh, race in the West gets tighter and tighter with a weekend showdown ahead. Tonight in New York, the Lakers fought their way back from a 10-point deficit and into a virtual tie for the division lead. Led by Gail Goodrich, who scored 15 of his 34 points in the fourth period, and Jimmy Price, who had 20. The locals went on an 8-0 spurt that saw them tie the game with New York at 2.52 to play and the score at 97 all. The locals then taking the lead for good at 101.99, and from there... The Which credit card can you count on in Tokyo, Japan? I feel the most secure with the American Express card, and I have approximately 20, 25 credit cards. The American Express card has gotten me through uh, Tokyo, Japan, and it'll get me back to Lexington, Kentucky. An American Express card is a great asset to a, a woman traveling alone. I pull the American Express card out and boom, that's it. No problems. Call 800-528-8000 to apply for an American Express card. Headache. All you can think of is relief. But before you take plain aspirin, know the truth. On the average, most of aspirin is still in the stomach 20 minutes after taking. 20 minutes. Take bufferin. It's twice as fast getting out of the stomach and speeding to the headache, and with less chance of stomach upset. Because aspirin or any pain reliever in your stomach can't help your headache. Next time, get fast relief with bufferin. Join the great American shape up. Everyone wants to keep in shape these days, and one way to help is eating right. That's why Weight Watchers fish luncheons and dinners make such good sense. Good nutrition, portion control, and plenty to eat. Tender and delicious because you cook them for the first time. Who says you can't get your money's worth these days? Join the great American shape up. And shape up. <laughs> oh, I just love learning new tunes. Honey, you've learned something new, too. This coffee smells great, tastes fantastic. Mrs. Olsen, he's never said that before. Well, Folgers' special blend does make a difference. He sure loves it. And Folgers is mountain grown, the richest, tastiest coffee. Mohan? Yeah, tastes delicious. Encore. Taste Folgers mountain grown coffee. The FBI has now arrested eight men. Another three were arrested tonight in connection with the kidnapping of eight-year-old John Calzadilla of New York. And they only have the ransom to get now. The FBI says it still hasn't found the $50,000. The boy was released unharmed last week. The Rapid Transit District's 25-cent ride bus program is to begin sometime in the first two weeks of next month. The Los Angeles supervisors are approving nearly $10 million for subsidies in the program, most of the money coming from federal revenue sharing funds. We've all heard the stories about the terrible drivers who have trouble just getting their cars out of the garage. Well, here's the story of 18-year-old Hector Ruiz, who had trouble keeping a car in a garage, which can be near deadly when the garage is four stories up. Hector works in a New York parking garage. He survived the jammed accelerator, but just barely. 
David Sheehan now reports on a new film that uh, is getting quite a bit of good reviews and good some reviews. publicity. And here's another one, more or less. It's called Conrack. And uh, the best thing to say about it is that we finally get an admirable picture about an admirable pursuit, the education of the downtrodden. In fact, Conrack is so admirable, I guess I feel um, sort of bad having to say that it's not quite right on. John Voigt is Conrack, as they say, and his performance is right on, as they also say. But the writers never let us get to know him enough to understand him, or the poverty-stricken black kids he's teaching at a backwoods schoolhouse on a little island off South Carolina. He starts off as a slightly condescending braggart who seems to care more about showing off than communicating with the kids. I want you all to take a real long look at me. That shouldn't be any hardship, because I'm handsome. Moreover, I have a penetrating wit, a fanciful imagination, and my eyes are almost as blue as Paul Newman's. I am your teacher. But he cared enough to leave his hometown and cross the river to teach. Maybe he was just compensating for his racial guilt about being Southern. He talks to the principal like he cares, though. Five children don't know their birth dates. Four children can't count to ten. The four oldest in the class think the Civil War was fought between the Germans and the Japanese. And once he does really start teaching, his character and the movie are both marvelous. Gravity, a law first stated by Isaac Newton and elaborated on by Johannes Kepler. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton. Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler. Gravity. Gravity. Isaac Gravity. Isaac Gravity. Conrack may have some flaws in characterization and the plot line may be paper thin, but one thing I can certainly say affirmatively about it is that Conrack is an intelligent and uplifting movie experience to be shared especially by families. And that's pretty hard to come by these days except for Disney, and Conrack is certainly way beyond Disney. And way beyond Disney is, you know, that's all that can be. An anniversary. And way beyond what? An anniversary. Oh, oh mine? Tonight is oh, the first, I, how did not you know yours, that? David. Oh, it's my first. Tonight is the first anniversary of Newsroom, so I'm oh, presenting oh, it to oh, the man who got it all started, who is our newsworthy newscaster. Oh, Joe, happy David. anniversary. Well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, Benty. Happy. If Mike Wallace sees this, <laughs> we'll end up on 60 Minutes and everybody will say, yes, you're just like KPIX. Tabloid <laughs> news. Right well, now, David, you have a minute left in which to say something. Do you want to review this anniversary party? Gee, uh, Sing happy birthday, I'd like, I'd like to say just briefly something that keeps coming up all the time. I was at USC the other day and uh, talking to a journalism class, uh, not a journalism class, a meeting that was sponsored by the Sigma Delta Chi chapter there. And people have great confusion over what television news is all about. TV Guide, as you know, is doing a series on television news. It seems to be slanted a little over to the conservative side. 60 Minutes this past Sunday did a special on television news up in San Francisco. And uh, tonight when we run a story, uh, as we did on the streakers or something like this happens, I sometimes feel embarrassed because I like to think that there is no room in news for streakers and birthday cakes or anniversary cakes, but there really is, and uh, we're all warm and human, even if uh, we're not all on Eyewitness News or working up at San Francisco. That's the news for tonight. Bill Stout will be here at 5.30 tomorrow, Jerry Dunphy at 6, and uh, we'll be back at 11, perhaps for another year. <laughs> Good night. Well done. Well done. Be there. CNR is having super spring specials on beautiful custom suits, the latest styles, special priced at $48 and $58. Sport coats, why pay $65 to $85? CNR has sport coats as low as $29.90. CNR has an amazing selection of dress slacks on sale for $6.88. Come to CNR.